Hello and welcome to another deck tech for Commander. Uh, my name is Brian Faduk, and I'm going to be showing you a little bit about uh, one of my quickly growing in favorites, uh, Commander, Merin of the Clan Nel Toth. All right, Merin is a 3-4 human shaman. Uh, it costs two colorless, black and green. Whenever another creature you control dies, you get an experience counter. At the beginning of your end step, you can choose target creature in your graveyard. If that card's converted mana cost is less than or equal to the number of experience you counters you have, return it to the battlefield. Otherwise, it comes back into your hand. This creature is extremely powerful as a commander. Um, I have played games where I've gotten Marin out turn 3, and I've had a graveyard recursion engine out turn 4 that just it shuts down almost every deck. Uh, it comes down to making my opponent sacrifice creatures with me, destroying creatures, destroying enchantments, artifacts, making them discard cards. Uh, it pretty much just attacks all around. So, with this deck, we're going to go by the creatures, uh, go check out all the cards in here. We're going to look at the creatures and everything else, basically by their mana cost. So we'll look at 1 drops, 2 drops, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Alright, so, uh, let's move on to the 1 drops. Sorry, before we move to 1 drops, uh, we're going to look at the mana base. So, for Marin, um, I decided to run 10 swamps and 12 forests. And then we'll go over each of the utility lands to see how they interact with it. And there's 14 utility lands. So we have 10, 12, and 14. So that gives us 38 lands. Alright, uh, it's a little bit land heavy, but it's good to get that quick, aggressive growth. Alright, so Homeward Path uh, gives each player control of their creatures. Sometimes you want to get your stuff back. Um, Homeward Path will get it back if they use a control magic or anything else to steal it. Alright, Phryxian Tower, an obvious put for this deck. Uh, tap for colorless or tap sacrifice a creature to get black black to your mana pool. You can use this to accelerate Marin. You can use this to use it as your sacrifice engine to keep getting experience counters. Uh, the uses for this are crazy. Alright, a Golgari Rot Farm, just to bring lands back to your hand. There's a couple utility lands here that you may want to bring back uh, just to reuse again. And it gives you green black after you bounce a land. I'm running a bayou in here. I have an extra playset of the green black dual lands, so I've decided to run them in any of my decks that utilize it. Alright, I put in a high market from the stock commander deck. It's tap for colorless or tap sacrifice a creature, you gain one life. The one life's not that important, but the sacrifice engine is extremely vital. I put in a Hissing Quagmire, uh, enters the battlefield tapped, taps for black or green, and you can pay colorless black and green to give it, uh, to make it into a 2-2 black and green elemental with Death Touch. Nice little defense, uh, gives you both colors, it's just overall a great card. Treetop Village, uh, pay one in green and becomes a 3-3 ape creature with Trample till end of turn, just another creature, nice utility. Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth turns all your lands and swamps into addition, uh, in addition to their other types. Just another good card to put in. Command Tower, obviously just to get extra mana of either color with no consequence. Grim Backwoods, Commander Stock card. Pay two black and green, tap, sacrifice a creature, draw a card. Sacrifice Engine uh, gives you card advantage. Just a generally awesome card all around. Yavamaya Hollow. Uh, you can pay green and tap to regenerate target creature. In this deck, sometimes you do want your stuff to regenerate, uh, specifically Marin if something's trying to kill it. All right, we have a Volrath's Stronghold. I have this from uh, the championship decks, but I run it casually and nobody seems to have a problem with it. You can pay one in black tap to put a creature card from your graveyard on top of your library. Uh, I've never used it yet in that sense, but having it as utility is just a nice thing to have. All right, a Spawning Pool, uh, just like the green uh, creature this turns into a 1-1 one, one black creature with black regenerate it it's just a good card to have and finally a bojuka bog uh, it exiles all cards from target player's graveyard you never target your own but sometimes your opponents can run graveyard recursion if you can pop this into play you can definitely uh, gain some advantage on them in terms of graveyard all right so we got lands out of the way now we will switch to the one drops Okay, so looking at our one drops. Uh, with this deck, I like to accelerate quickly into my stuff, so I'm putting an Elvish Mystic, just an elf that taps for green, a Findhorn Elves, another elf that taps for green, a Birds of Paradise, which is green for a 0 1 flyer, and it taps for one mana of any color to your mana pool, a Lanoir Elves, which taps for green as well. Uh, having these four cards is just great for quickly accelerating into stuff. Deathrite Shaman can knock out those uh, fetch lands or anything else. 
In the graveyard, you can also exile instants and sorceries to make your opponents lose life, and also exile creatures to gain life as well. Just overall is a great card, nice little one drop. Uh, even if it dies, that's fine, it's just got some nice utility. Right. I'm running a Spore Frog in here. Um, I like creatures with free sacrifice effects because pretty much getting that experience counters is great. Uh, if I have this card in play and I play Marin, I can sacrifice Spore Frog during my turn. Then at the end step, I can get him back into play for free with an experience counter. Maybe I can sacrifice it during my opponent's uh, combat phase again, prevent combat damage, and I can get him back to my hand for the next round coming. So it's just a nice fog that sits on a creature. Mind Slash Sliver. Uh, this is great for disrupting your opponent's hands early on. Uh, and gets creatures into your graveyard, so it's not really that big of a consequence for you. But it's black for a 1-1. Gives all slivers one sacrifice this creature. Each player discards a card. Viscera Seer, another uh, sacrifice outlet. Pay black. It's black mana for a 1-1. Sacrifice a creature to scry one. It's just a nice way to get your experience count up. A Soul Ring. Uh, this is nice just to get Marin out turn 2. You know, turn 1, drop a forest, play Soul Ring. Turn 2, swamp, tap all of them to put out Marin. And then next turn, drop something that can be sacrificed. Skull Clamp. It draws you extra cards when creatures die. You like when creatures die, so this card has obvious utility in it. You can also kill off your 1-1s, one and it can get you more experience counters. And two extra cards. And finally, a Worldly Tutor. Just the ability to search for a creature card and put it on top of your library is great to get that Sacrifice Engine up and running. Uh, especially with Viscera Seer. Uh, if you have a bunch of creatures out but you have no way to sacrifice them, Viscera Seer gives you a pretty much unlimited sacrifice outlet. Alright, so those are the 1-drops. After this, we'll be moving on to the 2-drops. Alright, so our first 2-drop is the Golgari Signet. Uh, it's 2 mana for an artifact, pay 1 tap, add green black. It's just more mana acceleration. This deck does really well with getting stuff out very, very fast. A Sylvan Caryatid, uh, same thing. It's a 0-3 Defender Hexproof, taps for 1 mana of any color. For 2 mana, it's just a great card to put in. Lightning Greaves, 2 mana, 0 equip, gives your creature haste and shroud. Uh, it's good for getting creatures into play, getting them to attack, and then eventually switching this back just to protect Marin, because you really need Marin running uh, this engine as often as possible. Golgari Charm gives you three choices. Give all creatures minus one, minus one till end of turn. You can rack up two or three death counts right away. You can destroy an enchantment, which is always great. Or you can regenerate each creature you control. Uh, you know, you get some massive damage hitting, you knock in that regeneration, and you're good while your opponents suffer the consequences. Viridian Zealot. Green green for a 2-1. You can sacrifice it to destroy an artifact or enchantment. It's death count. Uh, it's a 2-1, which is okay, but it also gives you that utility to take care of any artifacts or enchantments that may hurt you. Demonic Tutor, an obvious card for this deck. Search for stuff that you need. Uh, get a recursion engine going and just keep hitting hard. Alter's Reap, another obvious uh, piece for this deck. One in black for an instant. Additional cost, sacrifice a creature. You get to draw two cards. Uh, bumps up your death count and gives you two new cards to play with. Fauna Shaman is nice. Uh, you can discard some of your lower cost creatures to search for something bigger. And then you can have Marin pull them back into play. It's a nice way to tutor for specific things that you need and just to increase your graveyard count. Apprentice Necromancer, one in black uh, for a 1-1. One, one. You can pay black, tap, sacrifice it, bring a creature from graveyard to play, give it haste, and then you have to sacrifice it. So it's two death counts right there, and then you could probably bring Apprentice Necromancer back into play to keep upping your death count. Sakura Tribelder, an obvious choice for this deck. Uh, it was included in the stock, obviously. But it's one in green. Uh, it's a 1-1. One, one. You can sacrifice it, search for a basic land, put it into the battlefield tapped. So it's mana acceleration. It's a death count. Uh, it's a cheap little creature that's a chump blocker, and it just has some really great uses. Diabolic Intent, 1 in black. Additional cost, you have to sacrifice a creature, so there goes up your death count. And then you can search your library for any card, put it in your hand, and then shuffle. So it's kind of like a Demonic Tutor, but in this deck, it can be situationally better. And finally, a Wall of Blossoms. Uh, just a nice card to defend with, but also if Marin brings it back into play, you get an additional card back into your hand. So just another nice card to uh, kill, and then bring it back to keep drawing extra cards. Alright, next up. Three drops. Alright, our first three drops is the Yava Maya Elder. One green green for a 2-1. When it's put into a graveyard from play, you can search for two basic land cards, reveal them, put into your hand. 
and you can pay two, sacrifice them to draw a card. So it basically comes down to you have a blocker. Uh, you can sacrifice them to draw a card after the block. You not only get a card, but you also get two basic lands into your hand. Uh, the utility on this guy is amazing. And then every turn, you can keep doing it again and again and again. A nice quick way to ramp up into a lot of lands. All right, Pawn of Ulamog. Uh, I was on the fence about this, but when I started playing it, uh, especially with synergy of other cards, such as Grave Pact, which we'll look at a little bit later, uh, it's nice to get the Eldrazi Scions, but then you can also sacrifice them and up your death count again. So it's kind of like double dipping into it. Spawn Wraith, another card I was on the fence against uh, until I had my butt kicked, like, completely by somebody who dropped this on a turn two. Uh, you play Spawn Wraith, you swing. If you can get damage in, you get two of them. You keep swinging, your army of Spawn Wraiths get larger and larger and larger. And then later on when they start dying, they just up your kill count. It doesn't really follow the theme of Meryn, uh, but it's definitely a card that has some really, really good utility. Grim Harrisfix, uh, another great card for getting some card advantage. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, you get to draw a card. So your creatures start dying left and right, you get to draw cards, and you up your kill count. Liliana Spectre, uh, one black black for a 2-1 flyer, enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. I like getting card advantage on my opponents, especially if I can do something like a Skull Clamp on this, and then have Marin bring it back into play, and then hit their hands again. <clears throat> Dark Steel Ignit, uh, just an indestructible mana rock, just some nice mana acceleration again. Merciless Executioner, running as a pair with Fleshbag Marauder. Uh, these two cards are just great. They're three ones for three mana. When they come into play, each player sacrifices a creature. So if your kill count's at two, you play it, you sacrifice it, your kill count goes to three. End step, you bring it back into play, and now you've just made your opponent sacrifice two creatures. Well, you've sacrificed one. And you've gotten your experience counters up by quite a bit. So it's a nice way to control the field. Eternal Witness, another obvious pull into here. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you can return a card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, you play an Altar's Reap. Sacrifice this, draw two cards. Then when Eternal Witness gets brought back into play, you bring Altar's Reap again. And you can just re keep recurring and recurring to get more and more experience counters. Contamination. Nice way to lock out your opponents if they're not running black. Uh, two in black. During your upkeep, sacrifice a creature or sacrifice contamination. Whenever a land is tapped for mana, it produces black instead of its normal type and amount. While well, I'm getting my kill count increasing by one each time, and my opponents are locked into black mana. With Marin, it can just keep bringing stuff into play. Uh, if you can get this out turn four, with Marin out turn three, and you got that kill count up, you can just keep cycling this and lock down the game as early as turn four. Sometimes turn three if you have the right situation. Victimize, you get to choose creature cards in your graveyard, two of them, If you, then you have to sacrifice a creature to return the chosen cards of the battlefield tapped. So you recur two creatures into play, and you sacrifice a creature. So you get a nice little exchange with those experience counters, in addition to what Victimize allows you to do. Attrition, nice way to take care of stuff, uh, one black black for an enchantment, black sack a creature, destroy a non-black creature, kill counts up, field's being controlled. Wood Elves is great because it puts lands onto the battlefield. Uh, this can grab a dual land, a shock land, or anything else that has forest in it. All right. uh, when it dies, you know you Skull Clamp it, you draw two cards, you let it come back into play with Marin if you need to up your land count. And finally, Doomed Necromancer. Two in black for a 2-2. Two -two. Black tap sacrifice it, return a creature from graveyard to play. It's awesome, especially if your kill count is at 3, and then you can keep pulling this guy into play every turn. That's it for the 3 drops, moving on to 4. One of the obvious choices for this deck is Grave Pact. Uh, it's the first 4-drop that we're going to look at. Whenever a creature you control dies, each other player has to sacrifice a creature. With the sacrifice engines in here, you can quickly control the field, and you can control all of your opponents at once. It's a quick way to generate hate, but uh, it's an amazing card to put out. And this is one of the reasons why I like the mana ramp, uh, especially for things that will also tap for black. Because getting this out turn 3, 4, or even 5 gives you a nice advantage. Solemn Simulacrum, uh, obvious choice again. Comes into play, you get a basic land into play tapped, and when it's put into a graveyard, you draw a card. So when it dies, you draw a card, and you can keep recurring it back to increase your land count. Flesh Rither, a uh, nice little future sight card. The casting cost is up here for anybody not familiar with it. Two black black for a 3-3. Three, three. The Transfigure ability is great. You sacrifice it, search your library for a card of the same converted mana cost, and put it into play. So you can take any creature from this 4-drop 
Uh, so, looking at these cards, you can kind of see how this guy is a nice little utility grabber. And the sacrifice gives you another death count. Eidolon of Blossoms. Um, I have a slight enchantment sub-theme in here, uh, but just with having Grave Pact, and there's a couple other cards that you'll take a look at, uh, there's some enchantments in here that allow you to draw an extra card. So it's nice because it's just an additional growth on top of it. And as a 2-2, you know, it dies easy, but it's nice to get it back and keep drawing cards. Pattern of Rebirth. There's an enchantment that we use. Three in green for an enchant creature, basically an aura. Uh, when enchanted creature is put into a graveyard from play, you get to search your library for a creature card, put it into play. If that player does, they shuffle their library. So on here, you put it on a creature that you obviously want to sacrifice, let it die, search for a better creature to put out, your death count went up by one, and hopefully you pull out one of the big, mean, scary creatures in here that really locks down the game. Hell's Caretaker, 3 in black for a 1-1. One, one. Uh, his ability is tap, sacrifice a creature, return a creature from your graveyard to play. You can only play it during your upkeep, but it's a nice way to increase your death count and also start exchanging creatures back and forth. Birthing Pod, another obvious choice for this deck. Uh, it's 3 and Phyrexian green, so you can pay green mana or 2 life. Uh, pay 1 in Phyrexian green, tap, sack a creature. Search your library for a creature with converted mana cost equal to 1 plus its converted mana cost, put it into the battlefield, and shuffle your library. This is just a nice way to start ramping into stuff, and eventually you hit a very efficient combination of cards that will pretty much lock down the game. Barter and Blood, a nice way to control the field from turn 3, 4, or 5. Uh, each player sacrifices two creatures. Great way to take care of anything pesky that got snuck into play. And it also gives you a double experience counter from it if you sacrifice. And then finally, Spike Weaver. Uh, it comes into play with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. The middle ability I don't really care about. You can pay 2 and exchange the counters to other stuff. But the big thing that I like is the pay 1, remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter from it, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. So if you get this out, uh, you have 3 opponents, you fog all 3 turns, you let this thing die, your death count goes up 1, and hopefully Marin brings it back into play. Nice little way to stall the game. That's it for the 4 drops, we're moving on to 5. All right, our first 5 drop is the Eldrazi Monument. It's 5 for an artifact, gives your creatures plus 1 plus 1 flying and indestructible. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you have to sacrifice a creature. If you can't, you have to sacrifice this artifact. Uh, sacrificing is a very strong theme in this deck, so the Eldrazi Monument makes your creatures a little bit stronger, make them evasive, and they can't be destroyed as easily. So. This is nice. Marin will keep bringing stuff back to sacrifice as fodder for it, so it's a fantastic card to run. Another great card is Michaeloth. Three green green for a 4-4 four, four with Devour 2. You want to sacrifice a few creatures at least. Uh, it gets two plus one plus one counters on it for each one sacrificed as it comes into play, so you get some death count going up. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you get a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature token on the battlefield for each plus one plus one counter on this. Running this with Eldrazi Monument is nice because you can choose the order of your upkeep triggers. So you put out a couple 1-1s one and then you sacrifice one. And everything stays nice and locked down. Dictate of Erebos. Uh, it's basically another Grave Pact. It's less of black mana specifically. It has Flash and it's another enchantment so the Constellation stuff can trigger and help you. But it's another way to make your opponents sacrifice creatures. Phyrexian Plague Lord. Uh, you can pay tap, sacrifice it to give a creature minus 4, minus 4, or sacrifice a creature to give a creature minus 1, minus 1. Having this unlimited sacrifice effect is a great ability for this deck. Thrag Tusk, a nice little way to gain some life and get some 3-3 tokens. Uh, it's just overall a great card, and the utility in it is great. And in this deck, it's even better, because it keeps coming into play, it keeps leaving play. You keep exchanging for better and better and better cards. Acidic Slime, uh, just a nice way to, if you have a Sacrifice Engine, keep having it bounce into the graveyard, back into play. You can start destroying their lands, artifacts, enchantments, whatever's basically fueling their deck. Shriek Maw, uh, it's nice, it's a 3-2 for 5 mana. It's got Fear, it enters the battlefield, you can destroy a non-artifact, non-black creature. Well, you have to, so that's fine. And the Evoke cost makes you sacrifice it when, it play, when it's played, if you pay it for 1 in black. So putting this guy out, he immediately dies, okay, you get a, an experience counter, you get to destroy something, and it's probably going to come back to play later. Sidisi, uh, another great guy, uh, 3 black black for a 4-6, he's got death touch, he's got exploit, so when it comes into play you sacrifice a creature, when it exploits a creature, search your library for a card, put it into your hand, and shuffle. So he's a tutor, 
He's a 4-6 death touch, and he's a sacrifice engine for your deck. It's obvious that he needs to be in here. And finally, also the Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Uh, it's 3 black black for a 2-4, but he drains your opponents based on your devotion to black. Uh, it's a nice way to gain a lot of life. It's also a nice way to start draining your opponents. This is actually my kill condition, usually. Uh, you'll see in the 6 drops uh, what I mean by that, but... You keep getting them out into play. Uh, you notice things like Grave Pact, Sidisi, anything else like that. The double black, triple black, uh, whatever's running, you know, in their casting costs. It's just an extra life that they lose. But you keep putting this guy into the graveyard. He keeps coming back and he keeps draining for more and more and more. That's all for fives. Moving on to six. Right, first six drop that I thought was absolutely necessary. Dead Bridge Chant. It's an enchantment, so once again, constellation bonuses. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you get the top 10 cards of your library into your graveyard. So already, this is giving you a crazy amount of utility for Marin to pull from. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose a card at random in your graveyard. If it's a creature, you put it into the battlefield. So there's more recursion. Otherwise, you get it into your hand. So even if it's lands or sorceries or anything that was already destroyed, this gives you a nice chance to keep bringing stuff back. McKay is the Unhallowed. This is what I use with Grey Merchant. Um, three black black for a 5-5 five, five Intimidate. Whenever a human deals damage to you, destroy it. So that's great. Other non-human creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and Undying. So even if you sacrifice them, if it's not a human, it comes back into play and gets its result again. Grey Merchant is a zombie. Uh, so, you know, you just kind of bounce him. You sacrifice him. You bring him back. You drain him again. And then you sacrifice him again. Get him into the graveyard. End step, Marin brings him back into play, then sacrifice it again and have it bounce back into play for another drain. Grave Titan, uh, 6 mana for a 6-6 six, six death touch. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you get two 2-2 two, two black zombies, so you can keep recurring those creatures. And it's a nice way to feed it to things like Eldrazi Monument, or just keep swinging with them, and if they die, your kill count goes up again. Thought Render Lamia is another constellation card. Uh, this is why I run the constellation sub theme. If I can get this guy out, uh, just make my opponents discard cards, and more enchantments come into play, and I just keep knocking out their hand. And finally, I also have the Thief of Blood. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, remove all counters from all permanents. It enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each counter removed. He drains planeswalkers and kills them. Uh, you can use it to actually drain from Spike Weaver if you want to kill it and get your count up again. It's just a great way to keep pulling counters from all permanents. Loyalty counters, uh, you know, pretty much anything out there. He keeps taking and taking and taking. And then it makes you a really, really powerful flying beater if you can steal enough stuff. Um, I've knocked out three Planeswalkers in one turn with this. And then they brought the Planeswalkers back, so I sacrificed this while I had Micaeus out. It came back into play and stole those counters again. So it's just a nice way to grab some more control. All right, we got a few drops left. We'll just do them in this little section. All right, uh, Shieldred, Whispering One, 5 black black, 6-6 six, six Swamp Walk. Beginning your upkeep, you can return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield, so you're pulling more creatures back. And at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, they have to sacrifice a creature. Just a nice way to keep pulling stuff in again and again, and holding your opponent's field at rest. Butcher of Malakir is a Grave Pact on a creature. Uh, it's 5 black black for a 5-4 flying. When it or another creature I control dies, I make each opponent sacrifice a creature. And finally, also the 8 drop. I decided to put in an Avatar of Woe. Uh, there's 10 or more creature cards in all graveyards. That'll happen a lot. Uh, you can get Avatar of Woe out for black black. 6-5 with Fear. And it has tap, destroy target creature, it can't be regenerated. So just a nice way to hold down the field again. Alright, so that is my Marin deck. Uh, Marin's a great card. Uh, it's really powerful. Um, I actually saw somebody playing it first, and I started realizing all the interactions that were going on. And I started realizing that I had to build this deck. Uh, some of the stuff in here is pretty expensive. The Grave Pact, um, you know, the Tutors, the Eldrazi Monument, everything else like that. But if you buy the pre-constructed deck... You get a lot of cool stuff, and you can always use your existing things to keep, uh, you know, adding to it. It's a nice work in project, a progress deck. Uh, your opponents won't really see it coming, and it's just a great way to, you know, pretty much have some fun playing Commander while being a complete jerk to your friends. Alright, so, that's my deck. Um, if you like it, please leave some comments in the uh, video. Alright, if you do like my videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. 
And uh, if you know anybody who would benefit from this video, please send it their way. All right, this is Brian Faduke signing off.